Greetings. Great to be with you again. We've had such an amazing time the last uh, five or six weeks. We had conferences for uh, four weeks in a row. Uh, one, for example, was with a Mongolian group of churches up in Chicago, and it was a powerful time to meet these beautiful people, all hungering and thirsting for more of the Lord. And it was a blessed time to travel with a team to uh, let each one express their voice as unique expressions as vessels of clay from the Lord. And it was powerful fellowship time. We made many new friends there, new contacts, uh, many interested in our school there. And it was a powerful time. And we had uh, Kevin Zadai here in Fort Mill. And that was a precious time of 350. On Sunday, the last day, we had about 425, we estimate, there in a uh, joint service on Sunday with uh, uh, Dennis and Jennifer Clark's church. And after that, I went to uh, um, an Asian country to protect our, our friends. I won't mention the name of it, but met uh, pastors from various countries in Asia, some working underground in places of intense persecution. But all of these people were just so humble and full of the joy of the Lord. During that time of, of four weeks of conferences, several people asked me, well, who, who is this group with? What denomination are, part, are they part of? Um, who do they follow? Well, hopefully we're all followers of Jesus and that we don't get overly hung up with this side versus that side or one or the other. And in uh, reading the Bible one day uh, last week, the Lord showed me this scripture from Mark 9, 38 to 40 that I want to share with you. John answered him saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. I just love the beauty of how the Lord breaks through the contentiousness, the um, divisions that, that mankind brings on through our carnal intellect, through our uh, promotion of self or performance Christianity. And isn't it time that we get past that to move into the uh, revelatory love and realization of our identity in Jesus Christ as sons of the Most High God. We each have a voice. The Holy Spirit is moving in each one in a passionate, individual, unique way around the world. And let us uh, encourage our brothers and sisters in the Lord and always remember that the enemy is the devil, Satan. It's not our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And it's not a a competition. The competition, if anything, is to for us to be all that the Lord created us to be. He is our creator. He's the ancient of days. He's full of wonder, and he causes me to be in awe of him as we worship him and hunger to grow in increasing sensitivity to the seven spirits of God through the Holy Spirit, and also to um, listen to what he is saying and how he breaks through the uh, confusion and the chaos that is expanding and increasing along with increasing persecution of believers in many places around the world. And um, I just pray that you would have a fresh encounter with the Lord in all his grace and his mercy and his goodness and be desirous to grow more in what is he saying to you today. He is speaking continually if we but listen. I was listening earlier today to Ray Hughes that I've heard speak in person several times, and he's amazing. I encourage you to go on YouTube or Google and look up Ray Hughes, uh, the worshiper. And he is uh, a man of great uh, simplicity and, and profound, um, breaking through, breaking off of man's traditions, cutting through the religious spirit and, and the uh, traditions of men. And he was speaking about unity in one part of this video. And he says, uh, what is unity? And his answer was, it is corporate humility of us honoring each other, listening to each other, respecting to each other. 
we're not all called to be the same. What's up with this desire for sameness and uniformity? We're calling for unity in the body of Christ together. As Jesus spoke in John 17 so well in his last unanswered prayer, that we would be one as he and the Father are one. And how do we do that? It's by spending time growing in relationship. And we all look forward to that day when we uh, are leaving this earth and moving on to the heavenly realm, that Jesus would say, well done thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your rest. And we do not want him to say, depart from me for I never knew you. So I wanna challenge you right now, how well do you know him? And, and ask him, how well does he know you? And what is his heart's desire for you? It's for you to be all that he created to be. I pray every day that the Lord would help me to believe the way that he created us to believe. Because he said that the work of the Father is to believe. So I leave with you with that and ask you to pray. Email me. We'll have our email on the uh, bottom of the screen. Any questions or your comments? And what what is the Lord speaking to you about your identity in Christ? What is he speaking to you about unity in the body. And we're not talking just uh, carnal, superficial unity in the body of, oh, why can't we all get along? But how do we get to know each other? How do we grow in our intimacy with the Lord in order for him to give us his increasing discernment to discern the spirits, to discern the times that we're in? And I'm just reminded right now uh, by the Holy Spirit about uh, um, teaching by our good friend Kevin Zadai, who was here a few weeks ago, and he uh, illustrated how uh, Lucifer, and his name before he was called Lucifer was Halal, how he had nine stones on his breastplate. We know that the priests that went into the temple had 12 stones, one for each tribe of Israel. And one of the three stones that Halal was missing from his breastplate was that of the tribe of Issachar. The sons of Issachar knew the times and the seasons. They were able to discern the times. And the devil doesn't know about that. And that's why we read about in time of Moses that uh, Pharaoh gave instructions to kill all the babies. And in the time of Jesus, Herod gave instructions to kill all the babies again. And look at our own uh, country of the United States of I think it's 73 million babies have been aborted. The devil is trying to kill the future prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, the preachers who are going to bring forth the uh, soon and certain return of Jesus Christ. So let's pray and Lord forgive us our sins of abortion in this country, but I pray that you would hunger and thirst for increasing intimacy as never before, and that the Lord will guide you and direct you into walking boldly and not falling into conformity or sameness or imitating someone, but we're called to be imitators of Jesus Christ. So be blessed, and we look forward to hearing from you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for your time.